Welcome to 1953. World War II had ended. There was peace at last. Or so they thought. The CIA had been created. And so had the United Nations. The Korean War was about to end. People feared communism. And then Eisenhower was in power. And he would write new history. But how significant was the policy of the new look? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolina Herrera and today I come back with a history video specifically about Eisenhower and his policy of the new look. So I chose to do this video on this topic because I just find it so interesting. I wrote my extended essay on this, I made a cartoon, so I just hope that you find it as interesting as I did. Maybe it's because not many people know about it and it is very important as it affected many lives. In order to write the extended essay, I made a lot of research. I looked at conferences, talks, museums, archives, interviews, CIA documents, and I finally made that piece which I am proud of. I read a little bit more, mainly on Eisenhower for history class, the IB diploma, which is what this video is made for. Now, I'm not an expert, but I think I can give you a good introduction to the topic. Now, this video is not sponsored, but I wanted to give credit to this amazing channel called PowerPoint School. It has amazing free templates and they even teach you how to do them for free. Today's PowerPoint is actually one of their templates. So we're going to start with what is Eisenhower known for? So Dwight D. Eisenhower was 34th president of the United States, a Republican, right after Truman in 1963. He was a strategic man and he was elected because he preferred to get things done rather than advance in his own ego. His era is mostly known for the covert operations. With the support of the Dulles brothers, he was able to succeed on many operations with the objective of containing communism, liberating countries from it, and at the same time, reducing the amount of money spent to do so. There's also this willingness to use nuclear weapons to contain communism from spreading no matter what it took, also known as the brinksmanship. He's also remembered for his actions in Vietnam, Guatemala, and Iran. To sum them up, these were the main characteristics of his policy of the new look. We're going to start with brinksmanship. It means pursuing a dangerous policy to its limits of safety, so like crossing a line in politics. And it also means taking a brink or a risk, such as creating more weapons to intimidate the Soviet Union from attempting anything. This is demonstrated by how Eisenhower increased the production of nuclear weapons, which also contributed to the mutually assured destruction, MAD. He also contributed in the US involvement in the Vietnam War, and he created something called the Domino Theory. Um, I actually made a video on this topic, which you may find in my channel, and which I'll put in my description down below. Eisenhower announced the Domino Theory in 1954, which I guess you have heard about, and it actually turned out to be true. This is mainly about how a country becomes communist and the rest would follow. He contributed to this war by sending money and standing firmly against the Geneva Accords, which would unify Vietnam under an elected government. So instead, he acted covertly with the CIA to cancel the elections, and the war continued. Other events include the intervention in Iran in 1953, and right after that, the intervention in Guatemala in 1954, which I will explain in a second. He also wanted to reorganize the US priorities, which is interesting because he actually has a matrix which you can prioritize your task depending on how urgent and how important they are. So what he wanted to do was having a smaller army, navy, more atomic weapons, stronger air force, and invest in the CIA, which by the way was founded six years before his presidency began. I wanted to create an emphasis on the CIA because something interesting about this is the principle of plausible deniability. So Eisenhower watched the Nazi propaganda and how effective it was and was not even expensive. So he wanted to continue with these covert actions. The plausible deniability allows him to create an untraceable connection to any illegal or damnable actions committed, even if they ordered it, such as overthrowing or assassinating leaders of hostile regimes. 
Eisenhower used this to his advantage during his presidency to remain clean in his operations in many places, denying any sort of responsibility. He removed democratically elected leaders with the objective of removing a communist threat. Now let's talk a little bit more about the Guatemala case, which is also what I base my accent that I say on. So I want to briefly explain these events. So it's located in Central America and there was this pro-US dictator called Ubico in the 1930s. Guatemala rebelled against his oppressive regime in 1944 with the October Revolution. And Juan Arevalo was elected president who established a term of democracy. This revolution happened because people were tired of poor land distribution there was in Guatemala and really wanted a leader who represented them. Cobo Arbenz was then democratically elected in 1951, who was one of the October Revolution leaders and he made the Decree 900 in 1952, also known as the Grand Reform. This was a proof that the Guatemalan Congress and the main goal was to redistribute the land of the country. The thing is that General Jorge Ubico, the president dictator, had given most of the Guatemalan territory to international-owned companies, including the multinational corporation United Fruit Company. This led to the company's eventual monopolization of the nation's roads, bridges, banks, and utilities, from which it received its sobriquet, the octopus. It soon became the second largest employer in Guatemala after the government, but it often overworked and underpaid its employees due to the lack of intervention by the government. Benefiting the population with the redistribution of land, Arbenz also created more opposition to his government. Part of the establishment of the law was the expropriation of the unused territory, paying large landowners to redistribute it to the rest of the country. The United Fruit Company, an American company, was actually a huge interest of the Dulles brothers, who, by the way, were the head of the US government and the CIA at the time. Some of the land owned by the United Fruit Company was actually expropriated, and the CIA started making plans against the government. They accused Arbenz of being communist, and that if he was not stopped, other countries would follow, pretty much like a domino theory. Now, he did have communist relations, but he was not a real communist. He was just representing his citizens' needs. With psychological warfare and a final coup, which they had trained an army of exiles, Arbenz was finally overthrown in 1954. Castillo Armas was positioned as the leader of Guatemala by the CIA in their mission called PB Success. There's this painting by Diego Rivera called Glorious Victory, showing how there was a lot of bribery and also foreshadowing the doom which Guatemala was submitted to. This shows how U.S. economic interests got in the way of the situation, showing how they were not as scared of communism, but instead used the fear of the U.S. population to their advantage, as well as the rest of the anti-communist countries to support this intervention. This was a success to Eisenhower's eyes, but he did not know this would actually lead to many years of repression to the Guatemalan population. Latin America did not like this, just as Nixon realized in 1958, people protested and even threw rocks at his car. This only demonstrated how unhappy Latin America was with the U.S. policies, so they actually become counterproductive and they just created an anti-US sentiment. When it comes to Cuba, Eisenhower refused to meet Castro and started training Cuban exiles to overthrow his regime. Kennedy then executed the plan with the Bay of Pigs, showing how the policy of the new look remained after Eisenhower, as the US kept intimidating the Soviet Union in the most drastic ways until its peak in the Cuban Missile Crisis. This shows how significant it was in the escalation of the Cold War, as well as other conflicts in countries around the world. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. These are some terms that you must have been familiarized with at the end of this video. So if you do not remember one quite well, feel free to go back or look them up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more.